Welcome to Gulfstream Park. It is February 7th, 2014. Christina Bosanakis here, and I'm joined by Stephen Skaggs. And uh, Stephen, we have another lovely day here, very warm. I know you were out early this morning, and uh, I was actually out at the track as well. And what drove me there, at least in part, was Will Take Charge came into town on Tuesday. He's going to be running in the dawn, and I know you had a chance to see him earlier. Uh, you've seen him in the last couple of days. Right. I've been clocking here three years, and today was the foggiest morning I've ever seen in South Florida. It didn't even lift till about 8.30. Luckily, Will Take Charge's rider had a helmet with a light on it, so we were able to keep up with him. I think he looks great. He's galloping around there with his neck bowed, and he's acclimated. I thought the first First day, he got a little sweaty. Today, it was perfect. I, we had a chance to speak to John Sika, who came down with the horse uh, on ye yesterday, and they t they sent him out that first day because they were saying they weren't planning to, but he was feeling so good and he was feeling so strong that they had to send him out. And he just looked magnificent. You're right; he did get a little bit hot, which is to be expected coming from a colder climate to such a warm and also a humid climate here. But he looks fantastic, and he's really like a big puppy dog. He just has a great personality and disposition. Right, great, great demeanor. He seems as as big as he is, he seems under control. I was happy to see that. And I also had a chance to see River 7 yesterday as well. He's also running in the dawn, but we have such great stakes action this weekend. And I know also looking forward to the Hurricane Birdie on the weekend, Groupie Doll, she's going to be making her career uh, her final start and before heading off to Stad 2, be bred to tap it. So what do you think about the Hurricane Birdie? Can she be beat? I don't, I don't think so. She's definitely in the class of that field. I think she's won three or four or five or six grade ones. I don't know how many it is now, but there's not a horse in there that has. A local horse that's doing well for Marty Wolfson is Heart Stealer. But, yeah, I want to see Groupie Dog go out a winner. And also tomorrow, before, if Sunday wasn't just a great card, like great enough, we also have a really, really strong card tomorrow, highlighted by the Suwannee River. That's a great three event. And that's an interesting race to me, Stephen, because there's a filly in there, Abaco, and uh, last time ran a mile 16th. And before the race, I had a chance to speak to Shug McGehee, and he was saying he thought that she probably needed nine furlongs. She needed to go a little further. But do you think that she's got that shot to win, or do you think some of the other horses might, uh, might step up and... Uh, and uh, steal the day. I think it's Shug's race to lose. Abaco, to me, the last race is a toss. She does need a little further ground. Her race at Churchill the time before, it gave her time to catch up. She comes from out of it. She has to weave her way through traffic sometimes, but she's the class of that field. And uh, also on tomorrow's card, the Gulfstream Park a Sprint and uh, Sing Another Song, who's coming in a little bit of a win streak on his, of his own. But there's several other horses in there that could jump up and, uh, and uh, get the win. Laugh Track is very interesting coming from the Breeders' Cup. What do you make of that last race, the last tr a Laugh Track? Because he ran so well in the Breeders' Cup to be second, but he came back last time and really didn't sh show up as well. The one mile distance, you're speaking of the Cigar Mile at Aqueduct. And what's good to me is we're going to be able to see Laugh Track on Saturday. Groupie Dolls coming out of the same race. So I'm basically going to use what he did in the Cigar Mile, what she did, kind of cross those races out, and hopefully seven eighths of Gulfstream Park will both be their friends. It looks like Laugh Track is best distance of seven eighths. So an exciting card on tap tomorrow and even on this uh, Sunday. However, we can take a quick look back at yesterday. We had an overnight stake, the Awesome Feather, and a filly, a very well-bred filly, a full sister to Munnings, named appropriately Munnings' sister, jumped up and she won at a bit of a price for Berkeley Tag. Right. This was a six-horse field, and I thought Munning's sister showed a lot of heart. She took it to our free roll early. It was a good speed duel, and it looks like Marty Wilson's filly, my pal Chrissy, was coming on late, but I thought Munning's sister just showed a lot of heart in that race. She looked fantastic before the race, and she picked up a, you know, a nice check yesterday, and uh, congratulations to those connections. Very nice performance. So. We will jump into today's racing action, and we do have another carryover in the 20 cent Rainbow Six, $424,000, and that starts in race five today. But Stephen, we'll get into, uh, into today's card. We'll start off where we always start off, on race one. There is a scratch in number seven, Bernie the Jet, and my top selection in there, I went with number five, Bristol Dancer, and I see that you and I are in agreement. 
Right, I had difficulty with this race. I can make a case for or against almost every horse in there. This is the type of race where I could go all. But I sided with the five Bristol Dancer as well. I like the horses two for four at Gulfstream. Marcus Vitale's having a good meet. The jockey before her, Matthew Raspoli, got hurt. This horse just beat and knows it, Calder. They went 112-3. and three. That's fast over at Calder. So I think the horse is back in good form. I like that Dylan Davis is aboard. It looks like Vitale did want a bug boy riding this horse. I'm interested that you also used the number eight uh, ski boat in July and uh, comes out of a was well beaten last time, but that was in the slop. So I'm guessing you're just uh, you're you're chalking it up to the surface that day. His race two back, he ran a 13 on the rags and sheets. A 13 in this race puts him second best. So I, I was looking for some value. It looks like Luca Panisi's over here from Calder. So I think the horse is live, definitely at a price. Looking ahead to the second race on today's card, which is a six furlong event on the main track. It's a 50,000 claiming race and number one or my top selection in there. I went with number seven, three quarter Roy. He comes out of a, a lackluster, let's say, sixth place effort last time at Tampa, but that was in the Pasco stakes. And I find Tampa, it's a little bit of an odd surface or different surface. And sometimes some horses that might run well at Gulfstream do not necessarily run well at Tampa. Tampa is a deep track, very hard to ship into. You need a dead fit horse. I was against the 7 3 quarter Roy only because he beat Vince Ramos two back. Vince Ramos is now a graded stakes winner. But what I noticed about 3 quarter Roy, that race was in the slop. He's had three fast track appearances and he's ran significantly slower. So I think he's the horse to beat. He ran a 10 on the raggers and sheets. Nobody's close to him in here. But being that that was on a sloppy track, he's going to have to show me on a fast track that he can do that. I I went with the four wild card here, Irish media. Horses coming from Canada had been running on Woodbine's poly track. If you notice back in November, Mike McDonald actually breezed this horse on the training track at Woodbine, which is a dirt surface. The horse went 48 and one that day, best of six. The horse has been training over at Calder, so he's had plenty of time to get adjusted to the dirt surface. This is a multiple winner in this field facing one-time winners. He's two for five. I'm hoping he handles the dirt. I like that he's won two in a row. I get the best jockey in the race, Luis Saez. I also see that you used number one, Kitchen Police from the Wesley Ward Barn, and uh, both of us were on this horse, and uh, expecting him to see him forwardly placed early. This horse has been working with No Nay Never in the morning, so this horse has been keeping good company. I think he's the horse to beat. He will control this race, but I'm hoping for a closer to maybe run him down at a little bit of value. And No Nay Never is going to be is, uh, slated to run in the swale, I believe. So uh, obviously a lot of quality uh, with that horse from the Wesley Ward barn. On to the third race on today's card. It is a maiden special weight event for four-year-olds and up. Six furlongs on the main track. A couple of scratches, number three, number seven. And uh, that didn't bother me. I went to with uh, number five, successful runner from the Giuseppe Iadisernia barn. Coming into this off of a third place effort. Beaten six lengths, but that was off of a considerable layoff. Yeah, that horse needed the race, and you're mentioning a horse the five successful runner that ran behind cross traffic and Wickersheim here last year. Cross traffic ended up winning the Whitney grade one winner. I went with the six. I don't know how to pronounce that name. A Celerare, it looks like, for <laughs> Pletcher. This horse ran on Belmont Day. He got beat by Moreno. He only got beat six links. Moreno came back, won the grade two Dwyer. I think Pletcher's got a good post position here on the outside. He can stalk the speed. I think he's the one to beat. But I would like to mention a firster, the four, take it to the streets. This horse is trained well at Gulfstream locally. Jonathan Shepard trains him. Shepard is, it looks like, one for his last 43, so 2% with firsters. But this horse has a little bit of quality. I expect him to be running at the end, maybe next time. Yeah, you mentioned the Take It to the Streets by Street Boss, and Street Boss, of his numbers are very, very good with his first-time starters. You know how I always go to those, uh, a couple of those, my go-to sires, he's one of them. I actually used the number one Malibu Master in there from the Phil Surfy barn, and uh, was sixth the last time. That was in Saratoga in July. He's coming into this off of a pretty steady works, and I think uh, he was one that uh, might improve, or should improve, uh, second time out, going a little bit shorter, and I think easier competition as well. We're going to move on. On to the fourth race on today's card.
if I can get there, which is a 20,000 maiden claiming event, six furlongs on the main track. There is one scratch, number seven, uh, Quartin Lake, and uh, my top selection in there, number five, tap into the music from the Peter Walder barn and uh, Javier Castellano back aboard after a sixth place effort last time, but we're finding easier company here, and we're also reverting back to the dirt. Tough race, it really is. I, I was looking for a crash or a horse that was dropping big time. The two, Wingate Hall from Ian Wilkes trainee here. Ian's 0 for 26 on the meet, so I think he's looking for his first win. This horse is dropping from a maiden $75,000 race, sort of crashing him to the bottom in a maiden 20 race. I think he's looking for a win. I like this horse today. One horse of three, Caesar Run, is definitely going to be controlling this race, but this horse has a knack for running second. 0 for 9 with 5 seconds. I think he could round out your exacta. Yeah, I used him as well, and for the same reason that you mentioned as well, for his, uh, his penchant to, uh, to for the underpinnings of the, uh, of the race. We're going to take a short break and we'll come back and have a look at the fifth race on the card that kicks off the 20 cent Rainbow Six. There is a carryover, $424,000. OBS, the two-year-old source to the world in 2013. With undefeated juvenile champion Asia Express drawing high praise in Japan. Two-time Breeders' Cup champion Secret Circle. And Breeders' Cup third mile winner Golden Sense in North America. Make plans to find your next champion at OBS two-year-old sales in 2014. OBS, we measure success by performance. Express Bet brings you a whole new way to play the races. An easier, better way to wager on your favorite tracks. With a more streamlined interface or faster wagering. With more handicapping insights from our world-class experts. With more racetracks, nearly 200 to choose from. And with your personalized multi-view wagering screen, your tracks, your wager pad, and your video are all on one page. It's simply the best way to play the races. Your way. Welcome to Express Bet. Your way to play. We're back at Gulfstream. We're going to have a look at the fifth race on the card that kicks off the 20 cent Rainbow Six. There's a carryover, $424,000. And Stephen, we got to get into this because uh, there's a lot of money on the line here. A couple of scratches, number four, number nine, and a couple of jockey changes, number one, Elvis Trujillo, and number six, Edgar Prado. I went with number two, Theros. Uh, coming into this off of a sixth place effort, beaten four and a half lengths last time, I'm willing to forgive that race. That was back at December 14th here at Gulfstream. I think he is going to benefit. He had a really wide post, a bad post that day in the 14 hole, getting Lasix for the first time. So I think a few things, there were several things against him today, and today he's much, much, he's drawn better, and also first time Lasix, Kieran's dangerous with, in, with that angle. When I originally handicapped this race, I had the nine hooking up with the two early, so now that the nine scratch, I think the two can control this race. Kieran with first out, Lasix is deadly, he's sitting at about 25%. I went with the seven, Ironicus, from the Shug McGahee trainee. I thought this horse ran giant last time. Got a 10 on the rag as in cheese. He just exploded. And that was January 1st, so that's not an easy maiden race to win. I thought the 8 nowhere to run from the Michael Dilger barn would control this race. He beat Gallo Award last time. This is actually ironic as the move he made. I just, I thought it was lethal. I expect him to come right back and beat this. He seems like a very exciting horse, and we also mentioned he just had so many problems. It didn't show, we didn't see the, when he exited the gate, he had problems getting out of the gate. He did get up late. He, he also was not drawn very well, and there's a horse that finished behind him, Pacoza. He's running this weekend. Um, he's running on Saturday, so it'll be interesting to see, but he handled the, uh, the, his first time on the turf, Stephen, and it's interesting because distorted humor or on an, over an AP Indy mare doesn't necessarily scream turf, does it? Right, but the mare just keeps Keeps throwing runner and runner. She's been yeah. a wonderful broodmare. She has been. And we are going to move ahead to the sixth race on today's card, which is a mile on the turf course. It is a 40,000 maiden claiming event. And my top selection in there is number two, Golden Rifle from the Reed Baker Barn. First time on the turf for this colt by Go Sapper. I think the pedigree, uh, especially on the bottom side, it reads like this. Should the turf should be okay for this horse and uh, made uh, both of his starts at Laurel for Jose Corrales. However, I think uh, 
This was one of those horses which not necessarily, there were a couple of horses that I liked in here, but it was almost like a, a little bit of a hunch bet for me. I went with the same horse, Good. the two golden rifle. I went for the stranger angle. Yeah. I was looking for a horse to do something different in here. It Good. seems like of the runners, they're all exposed. We kind of know who they are. Yep. The two golden rifle, being by a ghost sapper out of an English mare, I think the horse should take to the turf. Horse ran a 15 on the rags and sheets first out. That's enough to beat these. And there's not much speed in this race. So the horse is coming out of one-turn dirt races. If Reed Baker tells Emma Jane Wilson to put this horse on the lead, he might just control the race. And there's not, I mean, we've got horses in here that are 0 for 26, 0 for 12. To me, it's a bunch of horses that don't want to win. Somebody has to. I went with one I don't know anything about by default. Yeah, and a bunch of it, obviously exposed horses. Now, how deep would you go? Because this race does kick off the pick five. And I, there was one horse that was a bit of a question mark to me. I did use her in my top selections, number six, Weinbergler from the Bob Hess barn. Because I felt, you know, last year she seemed to be a better horse. I thought she was going to be a better horse and had a bit of quality to her. And really things haven't panned out. She comes back last time, December 28th. She runs on the yielding turf course. Doesn't really show anything. What do you make of her? Well, it's a Philly facing boys, so I yeah. didn't know what to do with her. I mean, she's ran races that are sort of even with these, but she seems kind of like a, a one-pace type that plods along. Maybe the wire will get there first. I don't know. This is a difficult race. You ask how deep you could go, probably all. Yeah, and I know you also use number five, Pernicious, in here from the Ian Wilkes barn. And I guess last time, breaking from the rail, this time gets a better draw. Right, and this horse showed a little bit of quality way back in 2012. If Finn can get this horse going, it's another one where he's crashing a little bit, trying to get off the duck. So I, I use the horse second. I do like the horse a little bit, but no strong opinion here. Moving on to the seventh race on today's card, which kicks off the late pick four. There is one scratch, and number eight, serious indeed. I went with number one, racing aptitude. I think has a little bit of a back class and really hasn't shown in her last, uh, his, excuse me, his last uh, couple of starts, including the Sunshine Millions turf. He was eighth that day. However, if you look further back, the horses that he was running behind in terms of, and the graded stakes company that he, the company that he was keeping, finished second behind a horse named Obviously, obviously a very nice uh, graded stakes winner, and he finished actually a couple of times behind Obviously, Lukayan, another graded stakes winner on the turf. So he had been running against some really nice horses. Right, David Fox is 24% second off the layoff. Fox has to recapture this horse's form from Bob Baffert, but this horse is controlling speed. I see him being able to walk around there. I'm sure Kendra Carmoose, that'll be his tactics. But I ended up with the same horse at 10 to 1 with you. I wanted a horse that was going to be on the lead. This horse does have, or this race does have some quality. If you look at the seven border song trained by Christophe Clement, this horse always runs his best race off the bench. If you look, he ran in April at Keeneland, 88 buyers, comes back 75, didn't fire. Then the Christoph gave him about four months off, shows up in September, 89 buyer. If this horse is going to run his A race, it's today. So how deep do we go in there? I think you'd have to spread a little it's bit. A, it's a tough field. I mean, I'm, I like the one just because I think he's on the lead, but I'm gambling that, that Fox has at least maintained the form from Baffert. Yeah, there are a couple of uh, tough horses in there and seasoned warriors in that race. On to the eighth race on today's card, which is a 16,000 claiming event, one mile on the main track. And a jockey change, number three, Elvis Trujillo. And uh, my top selection in there, number eight, El Beats. But I know that you went in a different direction. Actually, another tough race, another tough race. The five and six, I expect to hook up early. I was against the one in this race, even though he might be the horse to beat. Wesley Ward trains centrifugal force. It's another one where the horse ran sort of out of his realm on the on the good track. If you look at the rest of his races, he's running 46 buyer, 42 buyer. Then he popped up with a 67. Today, the track's lightning fast, so I was against that horse. I think he'll be favored. I went with the six flash alert. Looks like since March. Marshall Narvaro's got this horse off Michael Leitner. He's improved him immensely. The horse is coming off a victory, shipping over from Calder. I think they're trying to win this race today. Now, you mentioned that number five, El Duomo, he's also going to be showing speed as, as well. Now, any concern in that? 
Well, the five El Duomo looks like he can't pass horses, and I think the five and six are going to hook up early. So I'm hoping the six buries the five, and we get six to one instead of two to one. Okay, very good. On to the ninth race on the card, which is a hundred thousand optional allowance, optional claiming event, a mile on the turf course, and uh, scratch uh, twelve through fourteen. And my top selection in there, I went with number ten, Dini Court, and uh, I know that you went in a different direction. You had another horse on top. Well, there's two graded stakes winners in this field. It is the nine unbelievable dream trained by Barkley Tag. This filly is one for two at Gulfstream, three for four at the distance, gets blinkers, which I like. Then we have the 11 group three winner, first time Chad Brown for owner Martin Schwartz. This horse has faced the likes of group one winner Flotilla. The horse is 10 to one on the morning. I don't know if we'll get that, but it has all positive signs. Lasix, Chad Brown, graded stakes winner in an allowance race at Gulfstream. Yeah, definitely running against uh, some uh, top uh, top caliber horses and Chad Brown and uh, Martin Schwartz have done so well with these kind of horses. Martin Schwartz is a very well known not only racing here in the, the, the United States but also buying these horses in Europe and racing them in Europe. So they've done well with these, uh, these type of horses. Last time at Royal Ascot, that was back in June, hasn't raced since then, first time uh, LASIK. And there is a, with Chad Brown it's one of those things where there are not many trainers that I would like off of that kind of layoff. I think Chad purposefully gives him this layoff. I don't know when the filly was purchased, but it gives him time to acclimate coming from England to to South Florida. I think Chad does right by him. He can win off the layoff as good as anyone. Yeah, and I'm I'm going to stick with number 10, Dini Court, who's going to be showing speed up front, I think, in here. And uh, I liked her last time, and I'm, I'm back with her today. We are on the final race on today's... Uh, well, we're going to have a look at Dini Court before we move ahead, uh, Stephen. But, you know, in this race... How deep do you think you'd want to go in, in here? I think it's a very competitive race. There are several horses that I was landing on. And uh, who do you think will be up there with uh, Dini Court early? Dini Court is going to get pressed today. That's the only reason I was sort of against her. Okay. You have the two, Peggy Joyce and the three, Unhedge, both coming out of five furlong grass races. Okay. So I think they're going to hook up with her early. Last time she was controlling speed and just got ran down late. I just think the dynamics of the race are sort of against her. But she's the cover girl on DRF and I've seen many winners mm -hmm. from that. Alright, so now we'll move on to the final race on the card which is a five furlong turf event. It is a tw starter optional claiming test with a claiming price of $20,000. Scratch number two, number four and um, my top selection in there. I went with number nine, Thomas Hill, and uh, we can have a look at that last race. And now, Stephen, out of that last race, wire funds, Thomas Hill didn't take it. They all came out of that uh, that last race. I think it's going to be, uh, which I think is going to produce the winner this time. Right, and I think it's great to go back and look at race replays. You really get a chance to see how these horses ran. I like the three who won this race here. I think this horse just wants to win. He's won four of his last five. I'm talking about the seven wire funds. He's 10 for 38 lifetime. I think he's got that killer instinct I'm always looking for. Certainly, and uh, that's it for today's card. And we do have that carryover, in, which starts in race five for the Rainbow Six, 424,000. So quickly, Stephen, before we move on, what were your impressions in terms of how the races played over the last couple of days? And also, who your top pick is for this weekend? Well, I think it's been... Actually, it's really fast right now, but I think the track's been fair. I think you can be on the lead. You can come from out of it. My top pick today is Ironicus. I haven't got too far into the cards, but I, I think um, we'll take charge. We'll probably show his class in the dawn. And that's it for myself, Stephen Skaggs, Ron Nicoletti will join me for the rest of this afternoon. We will leave you by looking at last year's grade one Dawn winner, Graydar, came back, won two more graded stakes after that. Very impressive performance from, uh, for a horse from the Todd Pletcher barn. So folks, stick around. Lots on top, tap here at Gulfstream. Good luck. Prado has the lead coming to the eighth pole. Take charge, Indy. Bourbon Courage running a big one on the far outside. Chubb is on the rail. Flat outs fifth. Gradar still full of run. Bourbon Courage will not get to him. Gradar goes all the way in the dawn.